Hey you guys, it's me, Laura, homeschooling mom to three kids, ages three, eight, and 10. And today I have our final big haul for the 2021-2022 school year. Now, for sure, this is not gonna be the last bit of curriculum and, and uh, the last bit of materials that I get for the homeschool year, but based on the unit studies that I have planned, this is kind of the last of gathering the base materials that I need to pull it all together. So there'll probably be a few more smaller orders throughout the year, but at this point, this is the last big haul. And I've purchased some things from Rainbow Resources as well as Amazon. So today is mostly games and a few specific resources for our next couple of unit studies, as well as um, some math resources for the different unit studies. So I will go ahead and show you what we got. Let's go ahead and start with games. Now, most of these games fall into one of two categories for either trivia games or their logic games. And these we will use during our morning basket time, but often we highly adapt the way that they're played just for the purposes that we need them. So this is the timeline game and it is meant as a multiplayer game where you are racing against each other, but our plan is to every day give each person a different invention card. So there's five of us, well, sometimes four if my husband's still with us. By the time we get to this part of our breakfast, he will join us as well. If not, it will just be four of us. And then we will work together to try to guess what order these things might have been invented. So I am going to put this in this order. So I'm guessing hourglass, gunpowder, launch of the first hot air balloon, invention of the graphite pencil, and then invention of the racer. So then we'll flip them over and see if I got them in order. And I almost did. So the eraser was actually invented before the graphite pencil and before the launch of the first hot air balloon. And so we will just have fun with that and do different ones every day and then reshuffle the cards. And this is just kind of a fun way to get us thinking. We might decide to do a little research on some more of these inventions while we're playing the game, but that is kind of just a fun little game we got for our invention unit study. The next game is called Ecosystem. So this is really too advanced for my kids to play normally. But I think if we modify it and play it together, it will work well for our morning basket. We're gonna be doing a unit study, um, a literature unit study, and one of the main things we're gonna be studying is about ecosystems. So I thought this would be fun for our logic game. So um, now I haven't poured over the instructions completely, but I know the idea is that you have cards and you're working on putting them the way it's written individually in your own grids. And if you have things beside each other, for example, um, the eagle gets two points for each trout or rabbit within two spaces. Well, that would be because the eagle is gonna eat the rabbit or the dragonfly gets points that total the size of the stream that is beside it because that's gonna help the dragonfly. They need the stream to live. And so you would shuffle these cards and see what you have and figure out how to put them in a grid in the way to get the most points possible. So instead of everybody trying to do that individually, we'll mix up the cards and maybe deal out 15 of them and we'll put five aside and put the rest in a grid in such a way that we can earn the most points. And I think that's how we will play this game. Again, um, it's written to be not a team game. It's written to be kind of one person at a time um, and is a little bit more complicated but I think that we can have fun with it this way. And the great thing about that is that then it's a game that can grow with us, that as the kids get a little bit older, hopefully they'll remember it and we can advance to um, the more complex full version of the game. So the next game that I have is Professor Noggin, Human Body. Now this one, I'm pretty sure that I will be using it for our unit study where we're going to be learning about light and sound. And it's kind of, morphed into more of a literature-based unit study on the book Song for a Whale, um, but we'll be doing vision and hearing and Helen Keller, and um, we're also going to be doing some about whales, blue whales specifically. So I thought this might be good. I might mix some of this with some of the um, oceans, Professor Noggin. I'm not sure exactly yet, but 
I don't always try to match up the trivia exactly with what we're learning because I think this is also a great way to expand on knowledge outside of things that we're learning in the school year. So I may keep this the same and hope that we run into a few things about hearing and sight, but we'll kind of see how that goes. This is another game we have, and yes, we've already opened it. So the kids saw it and they wanted to see what it was. They were so excited about it. So I told them I would show them, but then we wouldn't get it again until we get to the unit study. So this is Don't Rock the Boat. Um, and this I plan to use during our immigration unit study. It's kind of a stretch. I had a very hard time finding games for this unit study in particular, but this is going to be in place of our logic game. Um, it's a game where you have the pieces and you want to be the last person to put a piece on the boat before it tips. So that's kind of the basic premise and the idea. I thought this would be good because even my three-year-old, um, who will probably be four at the time, should be able to play this with us really well as well. And it just seemed like something fun and we will be talking about ships and stuff like that during that unit study. So I thought this might be kind of just a fun little addition there. This is the logic game that I got to go with our unit study on sound and light. It's supposed to be a one player game, but we use these, we solve the puzzles all together. You have these animals that are clear, so there's no color to them. And then you have the color pieces below and the color pieces below do not move. They're on a grid that's connected to the board. And then you're given a puzzle, um, for example here, the green frog needs to be eating a blue dragonfly. A blue frog needs to be eating a blue dragonfly. The yellow lizards aren't going to be eating anything. And the red lizard needs to be eating a blue dragonfly. So you have to set it up. This is the grid. I'm just following what they say. So you will do it so that each one is doing just what they say. So you can see here the green frog is getting the blue dragonfly. Okay, so the blue frog, you want its tongue to go this way and it's gonna get the blue dragonfly and then you have the green dragonfly and the yellow ones aren't getting anything. So that's how you would solve a puzzle like this. So like I said, we will work on this together. Um, this one doesn't come with cards. It's just got the, um, the puzzles there and then all the solutions are in the back. So that's kind of how it is. So you start with little hints that kind of help you out and then you, move to more difficult expectations and then all the solutions are in the back of the book. So that is what we will use for that. And that is it for the game. Now we're going to move on to math books. I was so excited when I saw this math book. I've been looking at stuff from Fun Schooling and the Th Thinking Tree for a while. Um, in general, the way that their products are created is the way that I absolutely would have loved to learn as a child. It's not a perfect fit for my kids, but I still think that a lot of their products I can incorporate in little bits here and there. And this was one that was just perfect as we're moving to more of a unit study based math where we're integrating that all together for my 10 year old. I found this and is perfect. So there are different chapters in the book and each chapter works through a bit of a different type of challenge. So in this chapter, you'll have the invention and then you've got to see how many people it takes to run the machine. It tells you how much each person earns per hour and how much money you'll need to pay them if you want to operate the machine for 12 hours. So you solve that. The thing that's really awesome about this is that we're actually working on order of operations right now. And one of my son's biggest questions with order of operations is, why do we even use them? When would we put them into practice? And this is a perfect example. So that's really fun. And then they have bonus questions, like for this one, if the water runs out, where will you go to get more? And there's not really a right answer. It's just kind of a discussion and fun. So it's got several that are that way. And then you have chapter four, which is mental math challenges. It says, here are four inventions that you should be familiar with by now because you've seen them a few times throughout the book already. Can you remember the name of each invention without turning the page? And then what invention costs the most to operate and um, what is the most expensive? And so it's just kind of putting all of those things together even more. Anyway, it just goes through and it continues to get more difficult and then it gives you less and less information so that you can kind of create some of your own stuff. And then there's paper in the back to work the problem. So 
I don't expect that we will finish this entire book during our invention unit study, but I love the flexibility of it. I love the challenge of it. And I think it's going to work really, really well for us. I got several of these um, math in the real world books that I think might go with various unit studies that we've got going on throughout the year. And I have used these before. We already have the ocean one. But when I was really ready to use it, most of the math concepts were too difficult for my kids and now they're just perfect. So in this question, in this one, for example, your first mission takes you to China where you are looking at how people have moved around over long periods. And so you're really looking at population numbers. You're looking at big numbers. You're comparing those large numbers. Um, you have this where you're using tallies and some of these are easier and some of them are more difficult. Um, for example, you have bought some fossils and now you need to work out how much space they will take up on the flight home and how many boxes you'll need to pack them. So you've got some area and um, cubic volume measurements there. And so just lots of different stuff. So this one is a planet Earth. So you're traveling around to the different continents and you have different challenges at each place that you go. This one discusses things on the human body and it has things like... Um, Andrew has been helping you to work out how strong you are compared to your friends. You're putting bags of fruit and vegetables into a box and he's recording how much you can lift to carry in short distance. And again, here you've got some of the order of operations, which is really awesome. And um, you've got some averages and all kinds of stuff in here. So this one's using expressions and equations. And here you're going to bigger and bigger, learn about tables, trends, and graphs. This one is about different animals, especially I think endangered animals and in the animal kingdom. I love that there's kind of a story that's woven throughout each book. So it's not just, I mean, you can totally do them standalone, but there's kind of a bigger picture story to each one. So this one is you're adding and subtracting with ants. You're learning about expressions with foxes and hares, and you've got symmetry in here. Um, coordinates and quadrants, that's a really big one that we're working on this year. Um, place value up to the hundred thousands um, and you've got polygons and sea turtle tracking and just all sorts of really fun stuff and there's several books in these this series so it's go figure a math journey and then there's different ones also along the math theme um, because we will be doing a medieval unit study and that's actually coming up here really quickly we already have a lot of the circumference books but there's some new ones and there's ones that we were missing so this is circumference and the off the charts dessert circumference gets decimus point circumference and the great knight of angleland and circumference and the fraction fair and these some of these are total review of concept my kids have mastered but they still love these books so we'll just put those in the book baskets and the new concepts like angles i know we're going to be going over angles so i'll build out some lessons on these and we will use that to learn some of our math with i know we're going to be doing angles and i know we're going to be doing decimals um as some of the new concepts and there's a couple more that we already have that we'll be using as well this is from Rainbow Resource. This is the United States scrunch map. So we have the world one and we use it all of the time, but it's this big map and it's virtually indestructible. Like you can pull on it, it won't rip. You can get it wet and you just kind of, you don't have to fold it, you just scrunch it up and put it wherever you want it. We have our world one scrunched up Sorry, that's really loud. We have our world one scrunched up pretty small and we just keep it in our book basket and then it's close by and we can pull it out whenever we need it. But there have been so many times I wish we had this one available and now we do. So the rest of this stuff is just stuff that I'm getting ready for our Middle Ages unit study. In the middle of the Middle Ages unit study, we're gonna be taking a little mini vacation with my, my parents to make up for one that we missed during COVID. And we are going to, while we're there, be going to a medieval um, dinner theater and so this is actually a unit study that was requested by one of my kids and so it's a very high interest unit study but I didn't want to have to do any any official school while we're gone but wanted to get some things to kind of continue the learning while we're there so we'll be listening to some middle ages um, time period audiobooks and I got these knight in armor stickers for my kids to do on the plane or in the car 
while we're traveling. I'll probably get some stuff for my daughter as well that's going to be more age appropriate, but um, I'm not counting it in this category. But my um, eight-year-old loves these Dover coloring books, and I knew he would love these. I will probably actually, he prefers these on a thicker paper so that he can color them with markers. So I'll probably make copies of a few of these before we leave. I'll ask him which ones he wants when it gets closer and um, take some markers with us so that he can work on that. I got the Knights in Armor one as well. And this has some colored in the back and in the front so that they can kind of copy those for some of them if they want to. It says what page they're on. So it's got the glossary of terms here in the front. And oh, my son is gonna love this. He loves Roman soldiers and he loves all, he probably can tell you what all of these guys are wearing and about when this armor was from because he just loves this stuff. So I think he's really going to enjoy this a lot. And the last thing I got is really just kind of fun. So the boys are going to be making kind of a notebook slash lap book slash scrapbook kind of thing for this unit study. And I saw this paper, it's just printer paper, it was not very expensive and it's just two-sided um, paper that I thought would be really good for that and kind of be a little more fun for them and help them feel a little bit more like their creation is from the Middle Ages. So I just went ahead and got this for the base pages for that notebook. And that pretty much wraps it up for this haul. And like I said, hopefully that's my last big haul for a while. A while that gives me all the bases the the main base things that I need for each of my unit studies for the year that I have planned of course I may add more unit studies and I'm sure that there will be different things that I'll need along the way but I'm trying really hard this year to utilize my library as much as possible there will be one more video that I do about the math curriculum that I've been talking about that we're doing called math on the level that's a little bit different so I'm going to show you how that works can't do a full review on it yet because I want to spend more time with it but I can at least show it to you guys and kind of how it works and so I'm excited to share that with you if you have questions about any of the things that you saw please let me know in the comments below I did not in this video tell you what I got where so I'll try to break it down by where I purchased the items in the comments below so that you can see that and find more information out about them there as well and if you want to see more about our homeschooling journey especially as we're kind of moving into more of a unit study style homeschool um, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get the notifications in your inbox and my question for you today is what you're most excited about as far as your new goodies for the school year i'd love to hear about it in the comments below i hope that you're having a great day i'll talk to you later bye